Hi everybody, Dacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Yes, I have splurged again. But that's how life goes. You take a little, you give a little, you find a little, you lose a little. This time around, I've been looking for particular pieces from past collections and my most adorable sales associate has helped me out to find them and to kind of gather them around from different places. So here goes. Here goes, here goes. Uh, we're talking two pieces. That's one of them. Ooh, lovely. And the second one. And that's it. Empty. We got the bill, of course, already out of there. But um, that's the second package. So let's open the first one, shall we? It's always difficult with these. Okay, this one was easy. Camellia off. You can guess by the boxes already that we're talking about, well, a brooch. <laughs> you know, I love my Chanel brooches. So let's open it up and see what we got inside. Uh, okay. It wasn't attached. Now, I hope you can see this. Interestingly enough, it's a cross. This is from the, um, where is it on? This is from the, what is this? Can't even read, it's so tiny. Spring Summer 17 uh, collection from the um, kind of computer room uh, collection of Chanel. And it's supposed to be a cross, but the cross is actually tilted. So you're supposed to attach it like this on your lapel, on your jacket, wherever you want to. And it's made in France. That's great. You know, I hunt down only pieces made in France. I don't do Chanel made in Italy anymore. Um, and it has poured glass and enamel. So these circles, it almost looks like a game of tic-tac-toe. The circles and the crosses are actually translucent when you look through them. But it's really hard for me to show you on the camera right now because this is a relatively tiny brooch. And um, they use a mixture of gold and silver, which I find very fascinating. This is the type of gold that Chanel has developed. It's called like a beige gold. It's a type of gold that only they use. And there is a double C there as well. And it looks like wires that have been attached, almost electrical. So it looks like a circuit board, not a circus, a circuit board in a way. The metal part that's matelassé, the kilted type of metal, they kind of elongated it and made it look almost like diamonds to resemble some sort of, I would say, if not circuit board, then at least resemble some sort of, um, zoom it in, I'll zoom it in. Let me come in close. Um, so this is how you wear it, like that. Well, you can see that it's translucent in a way. And that's the back of it. So you could see the light filtering through these wonderful little details that have been hand poured into the, into the, um, into this cross or into this X. X marks the spot. That's where Coco is. Coco is at the X. Um, so we got two X's in the X and two dots or circles in there. So I'm not going to put it on just yet, but that's what you're going to see me wear sooner rather than later. Okay, moving on to the next piece. Here it is. Let's open this one up. Um... Where did I get this one? I mean, not where. What um, what season is this one? This one was harder to hunt down than the than the other one because um, what season was this? I think spring summer seventeen. Oh, <laughs> adorable! It's so tiny. Okay, so I got the rocket ship brooch. Um, 
This one is also made in France. And it is in an enamel. Uh, no, not enamel, sorry, resin. This is all resin, and inside of the resin, we have layers of glitter and glass pearls and a bit of metal as well. And off we go! Right here. So this one has black at the bottom, it's translucent all the way through the other half to the top, and then we have all of the glitter inside, the metal. Oh, there's also a couple of crystals on the sea. So it's literally a miniature, Let's see if we can compare the two, it's like a miniature, it's the smallest size of brooches that they could actually make. Now maybe they, they can do even smaller, but size-wise they're relatively similar in comparison and so let me see if i got this right this one was fall winter you know why i'm confusing myself now because the fall winter no this was not fall winter 17 this is spring summer 17 because that's why i'm confusing myself because fall winter 17 was all about space travel and you would think and you know and then they had the uh, fall winter 17 um, um space age kind of space shuttles as bags, as minodiers or as clutches um, made by Chanel. So one would think, oh, of course, this one comes from, from there. But no, Chanel did release a couple of space pieces, not as a capsule collection. They don't do that stuff. But um, it was the beginning of the inspiration of what was going to come. They, so um, meaning they already did that in spring, summer 17. But I wonder if this is fall, winter 16 already. Their code at the back of this brooch, uh, I can I can read made in France. This I can see the difference between made in France and made in Italy because France is spelled yeah. It's seventeen. It's so hard to see these numbers. It's seventeen. Spring summer. So this one was exactly one season before the space travel. So it was a premonition of the future. It was a premonition of what was going to come. Now. You know, I love my Chanel crosses, and I love the Byzantine-inspired Chanel crosses, the Baroque-inspired Chanel crosses, uh, the Maltese Chanel crosses. This one is very interesting because it's so futuristic, but also dated in a way. It's a type of um, chipboard, motherboard, whatever you want, kind of reminiscent of the 80s and 90s, not something that you would encounter in the future. And yet it also has the styling of something very Byzantine. So it's kind of off, off its time in any way because the Byzantine times are over, we know that. The 80s and 90s are over, we know that too. Um, and yet it is so quintessentially Chanel, so I don't really know what to tell you. This is like a very, very particular brooch. Um, I remember I was talking to my mom about it, she did not like it at all. <laughs> she, found it, she found it very uninteresting and kind of not very typical for Chanel. But the type of glass pouring and enamel pouring and the type of construction that made this brooch happen is what makes it so Chanel to me. So uh, technically speaking, for me it screams Chanel, even though it has a very modern twist to it because the cross isn't upright. So you literally, again... You don't wear it like this. You you wear it like this, basically, like an X. The X that marks the spot where Chanel is. And I love the fact that they mix the silver and the gold. So there you have it, guys. That's that's my little uh, brooch shopping. These are... This is particularly interesting, maybe, to note. When I did my one-year ban on shopping, uh, the only two brooches from that year that I thought to myself, well, if, if I, you know, when my one-year ban of shopping is over and I go back shopping, if if I do manage to find two pieces from the old collection that I would really like, it would it would have been these two, and I was super lucky to have found them. So that's that's a great piece of news for me, <laughs> right there. Um, so in terms of brooches, it wasn't really a difficult year to like not buy something, you know. I'm still hunting a couple of sunglasses though. So let's see if that works out for me in my favor in any way. I think it I think it will. It just takes some time. But you know what I always say, it's all about the patience. I'm patient enough, I wait, and then I kind of 
attack when the moment is there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you have, please do thumb it up and let me know what you think about these brooches in the comment section down below. Um, I hope that I will relatively soon be able to make a full collection of the, an updated Chanel brooch collection. That would be really great. And other than that, um, go to my Instagram profile, Super Deco, all spelled together to see close-up pictures of the brooches because there I will be posting more more shots of them so you could see them more into detail because the detail of these pieces is really incredible and it is impeccable it's really really beautiful and it's really worth seeing them video doesn't do them justice the video doesn't do anybody justice <laughs> thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on youtube i'm also on instagram facebook and twitter so guys no matter what they tell you no matter how difficult it is to hunt down a piece you stay patient and you never give up on love. Love you guys. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.